Hi. <clears throat> Today's video is about something that I've been thinking about the last couple of weeks ever since we talked about going back to our roots. And it's a term I heard in a book from Brene Brown about how we dehumanize people. And it's, I won't go into the big definition of what I mean, but basically it means that we judge other people before we get a chance to really get to know them. You know, we, especially in politics with that use of study and my degree again, we see people on the other side and go, oh, look at them, they like this person. And we really don't get a chance to really get to know the person behind that. And I'm just as guilty. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to support this person because this person is who this person is. And sometimes that person may be the person in our community who gives us the food after something happens to us or checks up on us or whatever that person does. Whatever that person is, that person is also a gift to the world too. And it kind of just blows my mind that I work in the trenches of special education and I'm a member of the tribe as they call it when I was a child and I can remember when it was like have teachers and faculty and staff and teachers and whatever college high school dehumanize you because you felt they felt that they knew you better or that your know, chances of graduating or whatever wasn't going to be worth it that you were going to get special services all your life and that stuff really painfully hurts people and I was wondering why it was affecting me because I've done the work on a lot of that stuff but it hurts because it also we've done it ourselves to our community to ourselves we dehumanize ourselves we make fun of who and what we are in order to I guess win brownie points with the world around us and it's not easy you know I'm working on dehumanizing what I how I do it you know and the solution is to start talking to people without saying well I know more or after a fight argument oh I, I know better than you and here's what I think is allowing yourself to listen to their point of view I work with kids, and I tell you, the last couple of weeks there's been a lot of just listening to what they need. And sometimes they need to play, sometimes they need to work, sometimes they need academics. It's a, you know, I was talking to everybody yesterday, it's a hard deal because sometimes it's very different every day what they need. And it's hard if you, if you feel guilty for what you do and how you do it. And for me, I've been working on how to stop the guilt in my life and begin to, to heal who I am. So I don't dehumanize myself again. You know, the, the doubt. And lately the doubt's been really, really strong in me. And I'm thinking about how do I dehumanize myself with doubt? I'm not doing it right. And the person I work with loves me compassionately as a human being because I'm taking care of him, we listen to his voices. I just think that would be like enough for my voice to go, oh, you're not doubting anymore. But the struggle is so real. I see it in politics, in government, in, in life, in social media postings I watch and people criticizing people. Oh, you don't understand. And our job is not necessarily to understand. Our job is to really have compassion. And, you know, heart central coaching and heart central education is about meeting the child where they're at. So I don't agree with you know, you know, like I just jump on you. So let's say I don't like Bob in one of my social media posts. I don't like Bob. Bob's my enemy. I'm going to trust Bob because he's a Trump supporter, whatever he does, you know. Billy Bob should have supported. And so I, I go on hating him. That's horrible. When I could get to know the person and understand where that person is coming from. Take the time to sit there and go, why am I such division? Because I want to build a wall. I want a wall. I want to build a wall with people and places and things. And when you tear down that wall, it becomes a really beautiful place to live in society. 
and it really changes your look, outlook in life. I'm not there yet, but I'm really starting to see the change in me to be more loving, to be more compassionate for the people I work with, to understand that sometimes kids and adults just need you to really understand them. I think what other people don't understand you came from places they didn't get understood. And the cycle just continues onward, just continues dehumanizing gay people, straight people, white people, black people, whatever it is, we just keep putting them in boxes and saying, well, you don't understand, or you don't get to be part of this. And it's not me, our decision, I guess the before who comes to the table who doesn't. That's, you know, whatever you call it, divine self, whatever you want to call it. That's their decision. And it's not our decision who comes to our table. I can decide who I don't want at my table because of the toxic and the crazy and the whatever, but I can still have to love them in a way, understand where they're coming from. I come from a family which is really funky sometimes, and just understanding where that person came from is really hard, because you want to judge, you want to be evil, you want to be compassionate, you want to dehumanize them, you want to say you're better than they are. And it's hard because I want to be loving and compassionate to other people. And as I walk through the demons inside of me and the, the toxins and the whatever inside of me, I'm beginning to see that the journey really matters. It's looking at the shadows, looking at the darkness of yourself, looking at why we dehumanize other people to make ourselves look better. And I'm not beating myself up here, please, no. I'm just noticing how can I bring people together? It's by bringing myself together. It's by looking at myself and not putting myself down and not putting the kid I work with down and not putting his friends down and not judging before I really know. It's, it's not easy. My brain goes, oh my God, I gotta, what, you know. You know, and to let the flow happen, let the flow unite what I do and allow people in my life and places and places and things to create beautiful humans and to not look at the lenses that we look at the world and going, oh, right now, yeah, it is, but it's not my responsibility. Going back to my roots since I was a little kid was somewhere along the line, and I don't know, I'm still working on that, as I, I, I stopped believing that humans were beautiful, and I started believing what the wife told me, what the books told me, what the articles told me, that we're well, all just splitting up and fighting because we believe that stuff. We believe that that they were telling us. And the truth is, we're all human beings, we're all beautiful. It doesn't matter who we vote for, it doesn't matter who we, who we are. We've just kind of forgotten that and we've all decided to divide and conquer. So, and stop listening to ourselves because it was so much easier and so painful. I understand, I've been into that pain. You know, I, I walk through it every day great help and great professional help of people and a community. But it starts by creating a community inside of you that is loving. If you have dissension in your community inside of you, it's going to show on the outside. You know, and it's, it's crazy thinking about that, but our community inside of us is so, so valuably important to studying the spark that changes the community outside of us. And that's the thing. When we dehumanize other people, we're dehumanizing ourselves. And we're not giving ourselves a chance. And we're not giving ourselves a chance to look at the world around us. Kids, adults, teenagers, whatever. And we're not giving the community a chance to look at the community and be a community because we're so afraid that the community that we belong to is going to get invaded by other people. There are different points of views in that building walls and bridges and whatever, letting those people not in our community is going to make us look more comfortable and safe. But it doesn't work that way. In order to have a true community, you have to let others you don't agree with in your community. Because they show you something. They teach you something. And then if you don't want them in anymore, you send them away. But 
how do we do that? How do we stop hating ourselves? That's what it is, really, hating ourselves. So we can judge others. And that hate and everything is a hard thing to pull away. I'm still working on it. Pulling all those roots and getting new roots. It's having a divine self. It's believing in your new chapter and creating a new life that is so different than what we've had before. Thank you. Have a great night.